discrete character of, uh, you say, the modern physics and modern mathematics, how can we make the next extrapolations to the whole universe? There are uh, very big uh, philosophical implications on this. It is that amount to admit that there is a coexistence between uh, bang and nothingness. It, is, uh, it would be a death blow to the materialism, both old materialism and modern uh, materialism, dialectical materialism. Well, uh, does it make sense uh, to put side by side uh, bang and nothingness? Well, I, I'm, it sounds interesting. I'm not sure what you're saying. There's an interesting remark by Leibniz. Um, um, by the way, he anticipated this definition of program size complexity, of randomness. This is a discovery I made recently. This notion of algorithmic irreducibility I found anticipated with Hermann Weyl's help. In uh, this, um, Discours de Metaphysique, 1686, uh, paragraph 6, he has half of my definition of algorithmic irreducibility. Now, there's another place in Leibniz where he talks about principles of nature and grace, and he asks, why is there something rather than nothing, which is, has some connection, perhaps, with your question. Why is there something rather than nothing? Because nothing is simpler and easier than something. And I find this to be very interesting uh, because, um, because Leibniz is talking about complexity. And, in a, and he says a universe with something in it is more complicated than an empty universe. And I think he's asking where does the complexity come from? And this is a question that modern physicists are interested in. Um, and Leibniz's answer is a funny answer. He says God is the complexity. Well, so now actually in a way that's like saying the laws of physics and the initial conditions provide the complexity of the universe, uh, the initial complexity. And if the initial conditions are simple, like an empty universe or a singularity, then all the complexity injected into the universe is by the choice of the laws of physics. Uh, so, so the question is where does it come from? And I guess in a way Leibniz's uh, view of God is very abstract. And he's really saying maybe God is the laws of nature or it's the initial complexity of the universe. Now, Stephen Wolfram in A New Kind of Science has an interesting answer to the complexity in the universe. He says there is none. It's an illusion. The universe is very simple. And then there's the question of where is all the randomness that quantum mechanics seems to generate, which would seem to be every time you do a spin up, spin down, you know, which is 50% either way. According to quantum mechanics, it seems to me you're getting one bit of complexity added to the universe. You know, because you can't deduce that from the initial conditions of the laws. You have to add that as another bit. And um, Wolfram's answer is very simple. He says it's a mistake. He doesn't really believe in quantum mechanics, but he says there's no randomness. The universe is actually deterministic, and all the randomness we think we see is only pseudo-randomness. Now, pseudo-randomness is something like the digits of pi. It's a simple algorithm that looks like what it produces is random, but really there's an algorithm we're using to generate it. The digits of pi look pretty random if you don't know they're from pi. And in computers, people use pseudo-random number generators because sometimes for simulations, you need something, numbers that are random, but you're not going to put uh, you know, nuclear disintegrations in a computer. You want a, a simple algorithm which generates numbers that, that look random, that are pseudo-random. And Wolfram is saying, maybe the physical universe is really deterministic, and all the randomness you see is an illusion. It's only pseudo-randomness. Now, as a philosophical possibility, I think that's very interesting. And that's why I think that Wolfram's book is a philosophy book, not a physics book. But um, if quantum mechanics is correct, then he's wrong, and there really is real randomness in the in the universe, not pseudo-random. Okay, I don't know if there are any more questions because you I had have a question. I have a question, right. I think, I believe you wrote somewhere omega. Yes. Someone called that the chitin number, is that right? Yes, yeah, some nice but people. So the called. question is this. I call it the omega number. Does, for you, this Does that number exist? Exist. Yes, yes, I'm glad you asked that question. Yes or no? Well, that's a problem because by the, all the arguments I've been giving you up to now have just damned to non-existence you know, my, my best theorem, which has to do with that omega number. So I've just eliminated all of the work in mathematics I did. So it's a problem. But uh, now, I think what's interesting about omega is that it almost exists. It has a simple definition as a halting probability, but it escapes uh, the power of proof in this bad way that I told you you can't prove what its bits are in a very bad way. But let me tell you why omega is a little more real than maybe most real numbers. Um, you see, most real numbers I can't even 